Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to the next LP, which is 007 Legends. And yes, we're gonna skip this. Skip the... Um, there is some diabolical loading screens on this game as well, so... I mean, genuinely atrocious loading, loading times, it's ridiculous. Okay. Now, I'm already... Oh, how far would I say I'm into it? About about four or five hours, maybe. Uh, da, 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 yes. Now I'm actually going to start from the beginning of the game. I'm already on the final mission, Moonraker, but I decided if I'm going to do this, I wanted to do it as an LP from start to finish. So that means playing all the way from the beginning to the end. So. I'm going to have to overwrite my previous save. And we're going to play this on modern because this game was ridiculously difficult. <laughs> um, I'm going to play it on operative because, as I've already said, this game is quite difficult, so. And it's massively unfair as well, so it's quite buggy in places and it can be quite difficult to get shots off, so. Hopefully. Um, this difficulty mode makes it a little bit easier. The train, what are my orders? Eliminate Patrice. Oh, this game does not look good. God, it's been a couple of days position, since I last played this, and lining up a shot. I've kind of blocked it from my memory. You have a shot? Negative. I do not have a clear shot. They're heading towards another tunnel. Take the bloody shot now. So the game mostly takes place in flashbacks, four flashbacks, um, which ones is it, License to Kill, Moonraker, um, Goldfinger, and her, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Now those are really good films, I um, suppose that's subjective really, but they are really good films, to me anyway. And this game doesn't really do a very good job of actually... Um, capturing the spirit of the films, and here's the classic scene from Goldfinger, well, slightly. Bond here. Morning, 007. I need an update. Did you learn anything from Goldfinger's assistant? The girl is dead. What? He must have gotten wind of our investigation. The treasurer is convinced Goldfinger is behind the rising gold prices. I want you on the next flight to his headquarters in Switzerland. I'm on my way. Now the game was developed by um, Eurocom, who I think are a branch of Activision. They worked on the GoldenEye Reloaded, which was the remake of GoldenEye for the N64. Um, it uses the same engine as GoldenEye Reloaded, but it somehow makes it worse in this game. I'm not quite sure how though, it just the engine's atrocious in this game. It's really buggy and creaky. But this is a really cool intro. I'm not entirely sure why it lists the um, the actors next to the characters because the actors don't even they don't even lend their voices to this game. It has all the character like the um, the actor likenesses, but none of the characters 
they don't match up with the voices which is unusual, I'm not quite sure why it's credited the actors for I remember thinking that this was just my um, my PS3, but it's it's this is actually just the loading screens. The loading screens are terrible in general, from what I've heard. I remember getting this, thinking that all right, maybe it won't be as bad as you know as I was ex I was expecting it to be. I don't know, subpar quality, I suppose, considering it's a. It's not just a spin-off of one film, it's a spin-off of four, well technically five films because it's got Skyfall in there too. The Skyfall thing is annoying now because it's, um, it's DLC, free DLC, but it's locked onto the disc until the film is released on Friday in the United States. I think they wanted to do it as a worldwide release for the Skyfall DLC, but it's still quite strange. And here we go, the intro to the game. It's very explodey. It even uses the exact same. Um, hang on a second. It even uses the exact same um, heads-up display. You know, everything from a Call of Duty game. Essentially, the little radar on the bottom. You know, you object when your objectives come up. It comes up the exact same way as it would in a Call of Duty game. It's very Call of Duty. But then again, it was developed by branch of Activision so you can only really you know it's very strange Head to your objective marker, Bond. I kind of hoped that they'd go in a different direction with this maybe do what they did with um, do what they did with Bloodstone make it a really you know a different Bond experience because you know, get so many of these FPS. Um, I'm terrible at this game. So many of these FPS releases for one games is just terrible. Which makes me worried for the Skyfall DLC, really, because. It doesn't really fit an FPS. Um, it doesn't really fit an FPS look. It's, um, I already have an idea of what they're going to base the Skyfall DLC on, but since I've already seen the film, but if what they're going to be um, basing the Skyfall DLC on, that's what I think it is. Then it doesn't really suit their. Um, it doesn't really suit the way that Eurocom do their games. You know, they do very linear, tight corridor-based um, shooting games like this. Just do, it's like a shooting gallery, basically. And... I don't know, Skyfall didn't really have anything like that, so... Apart from one major scene, which would kind of suit something like this, I suppose, but... At the same time, I really don't think it would, so... And let me just keep an eye on the time. I don't know why, because it's only been recording for about 10 minutes. Now, I'm not saying this is, you know, a, like a completely terrible game. It's not a completely terrible game. It does have some redeeming qualities to it, but there's just too much bad stuff to get through before you get to that good stuff, and that's the most annoying part about this game, is that it does have some decent features to it, but you don't get to see those unless you really persevere with it. And that's annoying as hell. Right. Yeah, that's how you upgrade your weapons, but we're not going to be doing that. Well, not just yet, anyway. Alright, I really need to pick up another gun, I think, because I'm running low on weapons. Or ammo, I should say. It 
shotgun's kind of broken in this game because you can just blow away anyone from, say, about six, seven feet away. It's pretty ridiculous. Gotta love the physics in this game. Oh, there's driving sections in this as well. I completely forgot to mention that. There's. I've only come across. How many have I come across so far? About two driving sections. Um, I don't think Moonraker's gonna have any, but. The only ones I've done so far are for Dying of the Day and. Uh, what was it called? Um, Dying of the Day and what's the other one? License to Kill. Hmm, damn it, I can use your gadgets again. Oh, there we go. Oh, wait, I've done it wrong. There we go. Yeah, there's hacking mini games in this, there's the fingerprint mini game, which I'm not gonna, um, I'm not ashamed to admit this because it didn't even give you a tutorial on how to do it, but I had to look up a walkthrough to figure out how to do the fingerprint mini game because the game just doesn't tell you at all. I'm basically just left to figure out how to do the mini game. It's absurdly stupid if you didn't know how to do it. I mean, the fact that the game just throws it out, throws you in there without any, like, you know... It just assumes that you know how to do it, I suppose. Which is strange, because... Yeah. This is a very... Oh, I'll explain it in more detail when we get to it, but it's just not a very good system. Oh boy, here comes the stealth section. I don't like the stealth on this game at all. It's terrible. I know I'm pouring nothing but hate on this. Shit. I didn't mean to do that. Now skip it. Damn it. No, I can't skip it. Crap. But yeah, as much hate as I pour on this game, I don't know why, I just keep I enjoy playing it for some reason. It's shamelessly, you know, it's just it's just a shooting gallery essentially with James Bond attached to it. And a very, very subpar shooting gallery at that, but if I saw this for something like ten quid in um a game station or somewhere I probably won't hesitate to pick it up because I know I'd get some enjoyment out of it, but for full price, which is why I paid for it because I'm an idiot, um, I can't recommend it at all. I'd much rather play something like Bloodstone, which is a great game. Massively overlooked, but a great game. I don't know why so many people avoided that, actually. That was a really, really good game. Make sure you have adequate firepower and ammunition. Loud gun developed and by who was it who developed it? Um, will be dispatched to engage you. Hmm, can't remember who it was who developed it now. They did um Bond, the bodies of eliminated Bizarre Creations will remain wherever I think. They can be I'm sure it was Bizarre Creations. Maybe someone can the correct me. Yeah, Bizarre Creations, I'm sure it was. They did um, Bloodstone, Midnight Club and I think they did Blur as well, I'm not too sure. But yeah, if I saw Bloodstone for a couple of quid, I'd pick it up on the spot. It's a great game. Very easy to um, very easy to finish as well, it's not too difficult. Now, don't go into this expecting, you know, Metal Gear Solid Stealth, because this game doesn't have any. It's very, very bare bones stealth. And the AI is very inconsistent too, so you can always... Shit. The AI is very inconsistent. So more often than not, you might end up getting caught. Have I just been spotted? Shit, I think I have. 